Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we're going to look at something called Space Plan, which is described as an experimental piece of interaction based partly on a total misunderstanding of Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time. So, yeah, everything's pretty minimalist here. We've got the word outputter doing its usual load up thing. Instead of loading an intellect, it's using an idiolect. Sorted. Hello, wakey wakey, let's get to work. Where are we? No idea. Systems are being difficult. Power's all messed up. Sort it out. Use my kinetic generator button on the left side of the screen. Yes. So if you've ever heard of Cookie Clicker, that's what this is all about. Push button, you get power. And now I've pushed got enough power, I have access to the Thing Maker. The Thing Maker has power. Use it to build anything in our libraries. Searching for thing maker libraries. Let's load some stuff there. See on the other side we're loading it. Yes! Uh oh. Advanced robotics. Failed. Distress call. Failed. Cookie. Failed. Potato. Success! Okay, it'll do. Other libraries seem to be pretty corrupt. Get us some more power, repair some solar panels. So yeah, start repairing solar panels. And now I've got that, I'm actually making... 0.1 watts per second. I'm going to point out that this is my stored power and it's listed in watts. Anyone that's a physicist is probably going to want to select scientifically accurate mode so that it displays joules instead. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, it's, it's cookie clicker with a weird space mystery thing. Now, you don't need to use the mouse all the time. If perhaps you want to give your finger a rest, you can use your other hand and hit the space bar. Space Plan from Devolver Digital. Yeah, so this is us in orbit here. Up and running. Build more things so we can work out exactly where we are. You see, there's this mystery that's kind of the thing that's keeping you coming. We got a few solar panels working here. But if I get up to 120. I can get this next mystery device, but given that the only libraries that we could load were potato library... Ah oh yes, it already tells us. It's a potato. Now that gives us one unit of energy. This is... This is straight up clicker gameplay, and if you know these things, then I can certainly compel you to pay attention. <laughs> no, I, I was like, oh, download this, it's got space in the title. Boy, was I disappointed. No, I, I actually like Devolver Digital. They do a lot of really interesting games. And I certainly love the music to this one. That is something that does seem to be uh, stand out there. Okay, so wait, we get 0.1 joules per second for one of these. But for one of these, I get 10 times as much. So I think I'm going to go with this. Ah, there we go. But if I clean the solar panels, then I will get three times the amount of energy. So yeah, I should clean the solar panels. You see, you're trying to like optimize your path through this all the time while you're clicking the space bar or whatever, or pressing the space bar. So there's some question about which planet we're orbiting here. The ship status is breezy. Hopefully that doesn't mean that I've left the door open or anything. Panels are looking presentable. 3 watts every 10 seconds. Now these are responsible for 42% of my energy, but... Having said that, uh, this one is about 3 times more efficient. So you just gotta you know, decide which thing to bring in, and then at some point you can really splurge on this. Now I can modify the Kinetogen, which is this thing here, to now get 3 units of power every time I click it. My, that is surely a deal which I can... 680, bring me a Probotato! Yeah, Probotato, and there it is, leaving me heading down towards the surface and giving me 16... Oh my god, that's fantastic! Challenger is go, heading to the surface, yeah. And as soon as it lands, unfortunately... Oh! Probe Tato lost. Data gained. Data is stored in the fact holder area in the top left. Ah, we need to launch another Probe Tato. That's unfortunate. So you'll notice that this is generating 8 joules per second, right? So as long as this thing is less than 8 times the cost of this thing, this is the way to go. 
assuming that we don't care about the fact that it spontaneously explodes. So, you know, there are limits to what makes sense here. Ooh, Mara's Piper. So this is an upgrade which is applied to the thing makers. This one gets more power from the regular potatoes, not the pro potatoes, because those aren't really potatoes. They are, you know, oh darn. The good news is, We've now collected information on why the probe potatoes are failing. It tells us, wrap them in foil to stop them burning. Perhaps also add some lean parents. That does taste rather nice. So now I should be able to launch a probe potato to the surface below me and it will unlock its mysteries without being baked by the re-entry heat. I wonder how long it would actually take to cook food if you tried to stick it on the outside of a spacecraft during re-entry. I think that's some science that needs to be done at some point. All potatoes are now foil wrapped to withstand re-entry heat and the odd fan assisted oven. Okay, let's launch a pro potato to the surface where it shall remain and continue to generate innovative power. This place looks familiar. Get us more probes and we'll investigate. We don't even know what mass this thing is and we're managing to soft land spacecraft. That seems strange. Okay, now we're getting close to 30,000. Yeah, I can get the Kinetogen Sparkifier. This changes the way the Kinetogen works now so that when you start clicking you get a bonus. So I can just keep hammering that and get like a 1.25 bonus, which is nice. It gives us a reason to do it. Because getting 3 per second was pretty lousy. Oh, repair. Yeah. So, yeah, we can continue to do this and continue to get more details on the world. Okay, having stepped away from the keyboard for a while, I have a lot of stuff. So, I build my escape pod, which uh, will let me transfer to the surface, I think. Hopper R-Type's person pod is ready for separation. The ship will remain in orbit for thing-making operations. I'll take a trolley load. It'll take a trolley load of power to get us out of orbit. Fire when ready using the idea lister. Yeah, that will be, uh, there we go. Two million joules, and now I'm launching. That's my pod heading to this planet. Possibly Earth? Atmosphere is thick. Inhabitants all dead. But soon we're going to fix that because I will, of course, arrive on the surface and learn new things. I've got to say, I'm casting a pretty impressive shadow with that tiny pod. Looks like I'm landing on the dark side. They only come at night. Mostly. Oh, they mostly come at night. Pod's still intact after that nasty impact. Oh, the whole Earth thing. Yeah, it looks like this is it. Let's get out our radar improved using massive Spudnik network. Whatever. We just want to confirm the Earth theory. Okay, also, I think I've got enough data to understand how the humans all killed themselves. No point in explaining it to you. It's pretty complicated stuff. I may have a world-saving plan, though. Get us that system picker for sure. And that will take 20 million joules, which means more going away and doing the dishes and tidying up while this game plays itself. Okay, now I have the energy for the system peaker, and my dishes are all clean. I wasn't eating potatoes, but I'm sure they would be nice and clean. Okay, right, let's get this story straight. Check the system peaker. Apparently, I'm already ahead of this, having done the thing without reading the instructions. That looks like it could be our solar system. Yep, pretty likely we're on Earth. So my plan, this will sound silly, but try to bear with me. This idea is based entirely on my total misunderstanding of some Stephen Hawking book I just picked up in my data thingy. So, according to this disproven big crunch theory, the universe at some point is going to reverse direction and all mush together. If, if I've misunderstood correctly, time might go backwards during this shrinking of space-time. Probably not, but let's go with it. If, right, we put these huge bugger off massive boosters onto the planet, then we can remain in a stable orbit while firing more taters into the sun. This will increase its mass, meaning that we'll have to go faster to stay in orbit. The faster we go, the slower our perception of time relative to the universe. Time travel, Matthew McConaughey type stuff. With enough mass, the sun will collapse in, in on itself into a black hole type deal. Then. 
we approach its event horizon. At the event horizon, time will become infinite. Now I'm 90% sure that this is a euphemism for maddening death, but I'm a robot who can't feel, and you're a person experiencing a very linear narrative. So, with time being infinite, we'll reach the big crunchy crunch time in no time, or infinite time. I'm pretty confused at this point, to be honest. Anyway, then we'll probably get a big bang. Time reverses and goes back up, going forwards. Hopefully the universe ends up in a more or less identical state to before. But this time we know, know how the human race dies. We'll return to Earth, let them know. We're heroes, roll credits, start the extended remake and sell it on mobile, tablet and PC. Shush with your plot holes, let's do this. Planet Boosters! We'll need a way to increase velocity to stay in orbit. So let's buy the giant planet booster. I'm going to point out that this game is available on mobile, tablet, and PC. It's only like $3 or something on Steam. Having said that, whether you get $3 worth of fun out of it depends on how much you're amenable to this silly plot and cookie clicker style experiences. I use the word experiences because calling it a game is really stretching it, like, especially since you can pretty much walk away and just let things happen. Uh, look at my boosters docking to the planet Earth. I, I have to say, I think a booster that size would probably sink through the crust. Whoa! That was some serious yaw action there. If you turned the Earth that fast, everyone would kind of just fly off up into space. Excellent! Planet booster is in position. Earth is the spaceship. Ready for time travel stuff. Build spud guns to increase the sun's mass. Increasing our speed and therefore speeding up time. Or whatever. The more things you build, solar panels, probator, probatators, the higher the mass of the spuds and taters that we can fire into the sun. This sounds like an epic plan. Okay, some vacuuming later and I now have the cat, the energy, the cash to build a spud gun and it will actually generate energy and mass. Here's the spud gun. What's going on? Will the, oh, wow. Let's take a look at the system peeker. Do we get to see something? I think that might be... Yeah, look, you can see from the third planet out, taters falling towards the sun. I'm wondering if we're going to have to develop some sort of heat shield technology to drop a potato into the sun. Uh, I would honestly say that if we had, if we didn't, <laughs> then uh, why would NASA be developing their Solar Probe Plus with a, a carbon heat shield thingy? Okay, let's, fu let's generate a second one of these. This looks like a great plan. Second potato gun, Sol mass at 0 0.01213, okay, fantastic, the sun is truly going to become, I don't know, I'm not sure what it's going to become, I'm going to say if you kept on dropping mass like that on the sun, it wouldn't actually collapse into a black hole, it would actually explode like a supernova eventually, Just you're just saying. It would expand and get very hot, consume the Earth, and at some point it would explode and probably become a black hole. Or not, maybe if it depends how quickly you add the mass. If you add the mass too quickly, you would produce so much mass that you would get what's called a pair instability hypernova. And that is so powerful, it doesn't leave a black hole remnant behind. It literally obliterates everything. Anyway, given that the silly story and narrative are kind of one of the selling points of this title, I think it's only fair that I stop this torture early, and uh, if anybody wants to buy it, wants to find out what happens, you should buy it. Because it's only $3, and you know, Devolver Digital make a lot of fun titles. They're, they're awesome people. And of course, 99% of you are like, no, I'd rather uh, you know, claw my eyes out rather than play another clicker game. And that is a completely valid response. Also, you know, if you don't want to play the game, the soundtrack is available for only $3, and I think the soundtrack's great. That is absolutely, you know, great part, because certainly the visuals are kind of, mmm. Yeah. Anyway, the game is uh, Space Plan by Devolver Digital. It's on Steam and laptop, uh, you know, tablets and phones and whatever. Check it out if you like, but not everyone will like. That's okay. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>